Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this Overdrive live show. As you can see, we've not uh, still resumed uh, the TV show, but we have plenty of action for you uh, right here from home. In a couple of minutes, uh, Rohit and Bert will join us on this live stream as well. So feel free uh, to send us a couple of your uh, questions on our comments section. Let's start off the show with the Jeep, though. There's a 2021 Jeep Compass, which has been unveiled. Uh, now, the thing is that uh, it's a, it's a midlife makeover. There are a couple of changes to the exterior. It comes with a couple of uh, new features as well. But the most interesting part about it is that it will have uh, a few engine a new a few uh, new engine options uh, let's take a look at uh, the first look video the 2021 jeep compass has been revealed with a hard to notice midlife makeover the little inserts in the trademark jeep seven slat grille have been given a new mesh pattern and the headlights have integrated led daytime running lamps that don't really look very different from the model that we've seen so far there are new wheel choices too and this anthracite option looks particularly good to me. The tail is pretty much unchanged, but Europe receives new color options which could also make their way into the Indian model. And the European model seen here will be produced in Italy. Inside the cabin, the Compass now receives a new 8.4-inch touchscreen infotainment system with the Uconnect 5 OS, which is built on the Android platform, supports wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and even Amazon Alexa. It also uses the new Atlantis hardware, which is supposed to be up to five times faster and slicker than the outgoing unit. The Uconnect 5 system can pair with up to two phones simultaneously, has Wi-Fi capability, gets connected technologies, and is capable to receive over-the-air updates. Fit and finish was never really a concern with the Compass, but the cabin now also receives better quality materials for a more premium feel. The big change for the 2021 Compass is the powertrain department. The current 1.4-litre, 160PS, 250Nm turbo petrol engine is now replaced with a new 1.3-litre, four-cylinder turbo petrol. It turns out 270Nm of twist and can be optioned with a 130PS tune and a manual gearbox or a 150PS tune with a dual dry clutch automatic. It comes with a new sport mode map for faster responses and claims better thermal efficiency and lesser fuel consumption. Well, anything is more fuel efficient than the current 1.4, isn't it? So we hope that Jeep considers the 1.3 for India as well. The other engine in the lineup is the 1.6 litre Multijet 2 diesel, good for 120 PS and 320 Newton meters. But since the Indian Jeep Compass sits in a higher bracket than the likes of the Creta or the Seltos, it will continue to run on the 2 litre diesel on our soil. Both these new engines in the Compass are offered purely with a front-wheel drive configuration, while the all-wheel drive is now exclusive to the new Compass 4XE plug-in hybrid variants. These use the aforementioned 1.3-litre petrol with an electric motor and are available in two choices, 190 PS or 240 PS. I believe Jeep should consider one of these for the Indian market to make a green statement. Jeep has also worked on the steering setup of the Compass by making it lighter than before and in turn easier to operate in the urban environment. The FSD suspension that we love so much has been tuned further for sharper turn-ins and better stability. In the safety department, the 2021 Compass now comes with forward collision warning and lane departure warning as a standard fit, alongside electronic stability control with electronic roll mitigation and front, side and curtain airbags. There's also blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, and an automated parallel and perpendicular park assist. So when does this new compass come to India? Well, if Jeep were to only bring the updated cabin elements and the new infotainment, it would be easy to integrate and this car could come to India as early as the first quarter of 2021. But if they consider the new 1.3-litre petrol for India, then mid-2021 is more likely considering the amount of testing involved. Either way, the new Compass will be pricier, will charge a premium over its outgoing counterpart because of the additional features that it now comes with. Well, Jeep wasn't the only manufacturer busy earlier this week. BMW has just unveiled their 2021 4 Series uh, model. And if you haven't seen the pictures or videos already, which are up on our YouTube channel and Instagram as well, uh, you should do so because I'm sure that the design will leave you with uh, quite a few polarizing uh, opinions. Without any further ado, let's take a look at the first look video. Rohit has all the details.
When the 3 Series debuted last year, it was only a matter of time before the all-new BMW 4 Series would show its face. Just that we didn't expect the face to look so different than the 3 Series. It draws heavily from the BMW 3.0 CSL concept from 2015, borrowing its colossal grille and the contrasting sleek headlights. The headlights can be optioned with the BMW Laser Light Tech. The humongous air dams contribute further to the radical fascia. The BMW roundel sits in a dimple created by the new grille. The grille itself has a riveted pattern which looks quite good. But the ornamentation for me is the registration plate which helps break the visual bulk of the nose. From certain angles, the face of the new 4 Series does look elegant and I believe that this design will grow on you. The rear end is far more sober in comparison. But the money shot is the side profile, which shows off the coupe body style and the 8 series inspired low slung stance. It trumps the aerodynamic efficiency of the already slippery 3 series with a 0.26 coefficient of drag. The 4 series also features a wider track than its sedan sibling and is a larger car than the outgoing 4. While you would sit lower than in the 3 series, the cabin is very similar in look and feel, which means it doesn't appear as bold or as modern as the exterior or as much as the competition even. The rear seats are two buckets in typical Grand Coupe style, but best suited for kids or teenagers is what I would predict. BMW is offering the 4 Series in a choice of 7 variants, which includes two M badged models. The petrol variants comprise of a 420i base model capable of 184 PS and 300 Nm and a 430i mid spec variant which uses the same 2 litre engine but with a 258 PS and 400 Nm at its disposal. The diesel line starts with the 420D which uses the familiar 2-litre oiler from the 3 Series to push out 190 PS and 400 Newton meters to either a rear-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive setup depending on the variant you choose. The mid-spec 430D uses a 3-litre engine with all-wheel drive and an output of 286 PS and 650 Newton meters. Now if that doesn't sound enough, then the top of the line M440i and M440d could appeal more to you. The M440i uses the lovely 6-cylinder 3.0-litre petrol and mates it to a 48-volt mild hybrid technology which adds further 11 PS for a total output of 374 PS and 500 Newton meters. It will go from 0 to 100 in 4.5 seconds. There's also the M440D which uses a 6-cylinder diesel in a similar 48-volt mild hybrid setup for a combined output of 340 PS and 700 Newton meters with a 0 to 100 sprint time of just 4.7 seconds. That's only 0.2 slower than the M440i. Both the M-Bash variants come with the X-Drive all-wheel drive and an 8-speed ZF transmission which is common to the range. Add to it the 50-50 weight distribution and the 4 Series is likely to go like stink through corners. In the wake of what the competition offers, we expect BMW India to look purely at the M440 variant for the Indian market and the diesel will certainly give it an upper hand over the rivals. Since the days of Chris Bangle, BMW is known for controversial or bold designs and the 4 Series is yet another car from Bavaria that evokes strong reactions. How it works with the Indian audience is something we'll find out next year when it goes head-on against the Mercedes-AMG C43 Coupe. Well, the 4 Series will launch in India, uh, sorry, the 4 Series will launch in international markets by October and thereafter we expect it to come down to India as well. Let me uh, bring Rohit and Bert on the show now so that they can uh, give their comments on how the 4 Series, uh, what the 4 Series looks like. Rohit, Bert, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Sony. Hello. Hello. 
Hi, everybody Hi. out there. So what are your like thoughts on, on the new... Uh, what are your thoughts series, on the new well, series? I think before the four series, I think we should take up the compass also because uh, that's also a very yes. important vehicle uh, for the Indian market. Very, very significant market, uh, product for the Indian market. Uh, keep that in mind. Larger volumes, of course. Uh, a big player, Jeep is still not uh, kind of, you know, uh, while it's got running uh, with previous generation compass, uh, those numbers that uh, have dropped down considerably. And uh, we need, uh, they need to, you know, increase numbers in that space. So for Jeep, uh, bringing that 1.3 in would be very, very important. I think that is something they should look at very, very closely. Uh, from what I expect and what I understand uh, is that they will possibly bring that 1.3. Isn't that right, Rohit? Uh, well, I think they should definitely consider that 1.3. Uh, I believe they are closely looking at uh, what's happening in the petrol space as well. Uh, the two-liter diesel is certainly uh, still the big feather in its cap, and that's something that uh, you associate the Jeep Compass with uh, for the kind of performance that it offers. The petrol's never really taken off that well, uh, but right now, in the way the competition has ramped up, the amount of action that's happening in that uh, 15 to 20 lakh rupees space with the Seltos, with the Creta, that's one chunk that uh, be, that uh, Jeep will not want to lose out on. And uh, the, the Compass Petrol has not really been able to do much out there. And one of the biggest reasons for that uh, has been the engine. Its weak link is not its uh, performance, but its fuel economy. It is terrible. That's the only one that comes to mind. And hopefully that 1.3 will solve it. It claims to be more fuel efficient. It claims to be cleaner as well. Uh, and it still comes with a manual and an automatic option. It's still got the DCT option uh, up there. So I think that is something that uh, Jeep will want to look at. Uh, in fact, Fiat has had uh, quite a bit of success with this engine in some of its own cars. Uh, that is something that Jeep will uh, sort of keep in mind. And uh, I think uh, that is one engine they should definitely look at. Also, keep in mind, uh, going forward, the 1.3 brings a lot of efficiencies uh, in terms of uh, emissions. Uh, also, cost uh, is going to be a big factor. With the larger diesels, uh, you know, uh, add blue and the whole paraphernalia that goes along with that ecosystem is going to be a far more expensive ownership, uh, you know, experience. It's going to be a lot more expensive uh, maintaining those diesel cars. So I think that's where the petrol uh, stands a better chance. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, more, there should be a more than a higher appeal uh, for consumers looking for that kind of a product. So, you know, you're not going as it is, the compass goes up to almost 26 to 27 lakhs on road. Your, right. you know, with the new range of engines and everything, that price could, you know, go up even further. Uh, so, yeah, it would make uh, it would be very, very smart choice for Jeep to get that down. But uh, you know, like we're hearing, uh, they are actively looking at uh, bringing that 1.3 down to India. So let's see what happens on that front. In fact, I'm going to add a little more uh, to this. Uh, it's not just Jeep, but also Fiat powertrain that might be looking closely at uh, this particular powertrain in India, uh, because this 1.3 also has a hybrid variant, a plug-in hybrid variant, uh, which also has some decent uh, power figures to boast of 190 PS, 240 PS tunes and all of that. Yes. And in fact, with the Compass, uh, it is only these uh, plug-in hybrid variants, uh, which will now get the all-wheel drive. The regular petrol and diesel variants will not get them. This is, a, of course, the European market that I'm talking about. And it's only these hybrid variants that will get the electronic uh, all-wheel drive. And that is another powertrain that I think Fiat powertrain should actively look into, especially for the Indian market. Uh, because after the demise of the DDIS and the 1.3 multi-jet and all of that in India, the national diesel engine that literally kept FPT alive in India has sort of now taken a backseat or it's completely vanished from the market. Uh, so that they need a new business uh, case. They need a new engine that they can now uh, start building uh, for the Indian market and uh, hopefully democratize it. And this 1.3 hybrid and the 1.3 petrol could actually make a lot of business sense for them is what I believe. Absolutely. Uh, moving on, I think we can go to the the four series, uh, the four coupe, of course, BMW polarizing uh, views, uh, opinions on the way it looks. Of course, it's going to be polarizing opinions. Uh, not uh, from you know just the good and the bad for most of what I hear and seen so far. Everybody dislikes the front end. Uh, the, that large grill is just uh, in your face. Uh, it just doesn't fit and blend with the rest of the car. It's got a lovely silhouette. Otherwise, the coupe form is fantastic. Looks great. Great set of uh, interiors as well with a lot of kit. So it should be a very interesting car. Uh, the good news is also going to be that uh, the four series will come down to India. BMW. India will offer this at some point. Uh, I do hope that they are able to or in a position to move products in a much faster manner than ever before. 
because let's uh, not forget one of the reasons uh, their competitors are doing extremely well in the market is because there is just so much of variety, diversity in that product lineup from a uh, three-pointed star. So for BMW, I think it would be very important to you know add uh, to whatever they've got in India and get it down faster if uh, they want to make headway and uh, you know uh, attract uh, more consumers to the brand. Yeah. All right. So should we move on to our next uh, next update that we have on the show? I think, I think before we move on, Soini, I'm going to quickly add uh, a little more perspective to uh, what Bert just said about the four series. Uh, after the images came out, uh, remember the images leaked a little before the launch. One day before the launch, the images were leaked. Uh, and, uh, you know, people have been on Twitter, on Facebook, on social media, literally uh, just pulling down the design, right? I mean, it is a polarizing design. It's not to everyone's taste. It's not uh, typical to BMW either. Something this outrageous is something that we've only seen on concepts from BMW. But interestingly, uh, BMW designers have uh, also said that uh, this this design could be exclusive to the four series. We may not see a similar design on any other BMW because going forward now, the plan for BMW is that they want to make sure every uh, car in their lineup looks different from each other. In fact, these were the first of the Germans to start that same sausage, different uh, size kind of a philosophy uh, with all the cars literally looking the same and only being available in different sizes. But now BMW wants to change that. They want to turn that around. They want to make sure that every car in the lineup now looks different, has something of its own in terms of the design. And uh, this is where the design of the 4 Series uh, looks so different from what we've seen on the 3 Series, which is its sedan sibling. And I think going forward, all cars will have something very unique uh, in, in that sense. Yes. Yes, but I think let's let's move on. Uh, we've got, again, we have, uh, some positive for time. So, Ini is uh, getting itchy over there. Let's carry on with the news uh, for now, guys. No, I'm not. Actually, there's been uh, a lot of interest in the 2021 Toyota Fortuner that's uh, up next. Uh, in fact, uh, what we've seen is that it's a very clean design, but what has really caught our attention is the top spec uh, variant of the Fortuner, which is the Legender. So let's just take a look at that video. Toyota has finally revealed the 2021 Fortuner. It's a midlife makeover, it was long time coming and now it's finally here. Uh, now the most important bit to the new Fortuner is its sharper new styling. There are however multiple variants to choose from. Why I'm pointing this out is because the lower trims look very different from the new top of the line variant which is called the Legender. Now the Legender is the one that really has my attention. It draws a lot of design inspiration from the Lexus line. So you see a uh, new sharper element for the headlights you get a four pot led treatment very similar to what lexus does with its suvs and right in the center is a grill arrangement a split grill arrangement which looks very much like the spindle grill that lexus likes to put on its cars of course the detailing is different it's not as complex as what you see on the lexus but there is that resemblance between the two and you know it's a part of the same family the lower trims get a more sober face. The shape of the grille is similar to the outgoing car, but the two slat detailing now makes way for a mesh grille. I think it looks quite good. Even the headlamps are different from the Legender. You don't get that four-point arrangement. You still get a single projector beam, but there's a new LED light signature. Now inside the cabin, changes are even more subtle than what you see on the outside of the lower trims. There is now a new 8-inch infotainment touchscreen. It is compatible with wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In the Legender, you get similar functionality but with a 9-inch screen. Toyota has also thrown in a 360-degree camera. There is LED ambient lighting. There is a new 9-speaker JBL audio. So that's something that we can look forward to. Now, we don't know how much of this is going to make its way to the India model. The cabin is secured with up to 7 airbags and there's also the Toyota Safety Sense which now makes its way to the Fortuner which means you get certain radar guided technologies like radar guided cruise control, automated braking, collision prevention, lane departure warning and all of that. I don't know if this is going to come to the Indian model, seems unlikely, it's I think only the infotainment that will make its way to the updated Fortuner when it comes to India. Now the big change to the Fortuner apart from the design of course is under the hood. The 2.8 litre turbo diesel has now been upgraded to put out 204 PS of power and 500 Newton meters of torque. And Toyota says that despite the uprated power and torque, the fuel economy is better than the outgoing model. Even the emissions are cleaner than the outgoing model. Now I doubt if this new engine will make its way to the Indian model. 
They recently upgraded the 2.8 in India to be BSX compliant. In fact, they even increased prices on the BSX range yesterday. And I think that engine will continue to do duty even when the new Fortuner comes to India. So when does this new Fortuner come to India? Well, early 2021 is what we're hearing from our sources close to Toyota. Q1 of 2021 is a safe bet, is what I believe. Now, this model will certainly be more expensive than the outgoing car with the host of new features that it's going to bring in. Will it be worth it or not is something that we'll only be able to tell you once we drive the car. But as of now, the update looks good. The equipment upgrade also looks good. And that's something worth waiting for. Well, so there was quite a lot of traction when we put this video out uh, on YouTube and there were so yes. many comments coming in, right? It's a quite a popular car. It yeah, certainly is. I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the top selling cars in its segment and everyone is uh, sort of uh, gunning for the, uh, for the Fortuner's throat. Uh, everyone from Skoda, VW, Ford, everyone wants a piece of that cake and I think uh, it speaks volumes uh, for what the Fortuner is all about. For that price bracket, doing those kind of numbers, I think it's uh, it's a very important car. No, of course it is a very important car, not just for the uh, for the numbers, but for Toyota because it also represents a lot of what Toyota stands for as as a brand, which is reliability, quality, uh, longevity of the product. At the end of the day, you know, because uh, Toyota's uh, right. Toyota, of course, and of, of course the service and the ownership costs over a period of time. So people don't mind paying uh, the premium uh, less for that, uh, you know, the premium prices for the, for that. Uh, product in that category because they know it's going to really work for them for a long time. Uh, so in that sense, yes, what I do find very interesting about the legend that I, I want to you know, point out also, of course, is that uh, I think and I think at some point in time, we will talk to Lexus about this uh, pretty soon. In fact, I'm going to post a question to them uh, pretty soon after this. At any point, are they going to be considering getting the Fortuner under the Lexus badge? Uh, and you know that that is going to be a crucial uh, entry point for them because it uh, lowers the price point at which you can enter. Uh, Lexus. So I think there is definitely a case uh, for the Fortuner getting into uh, the Lexus fold as well. And probably one of those, you know, that that grill design could probably uh, be a hint at something that's uh, brewing for the future. I don't know, but uh, the Fortuner definitely stands right there if they wanted to do something of that sort. It, it very well could because uh, some of the most common questions and comments that we got uh, about the Fortuner after the images came out uh, was uh, the legend. I mean, everyone is hoping that the Legenda comes to India. And uh, like you said, uh, a bit of that Lexus uh, treatment uh, sort, sort of filtering down into the Toyota Fortuner is uh, something that people are really looking forward to. So it can also work the other way around maybe. Uh, Lexus could borrow that proven uh, platform of the Fortuner and maybe turn it around into something more luxurious, but at the same time affordable and something that can actually go up against uh, the compact uh, luxury cars out there in that similar price bracket. In fact, uh, we were told that a few years ago, or rather for the last couple of years, most of the German entry-level compact luxury uh, crossovers and SUVs are suffering big time in terms of their sales purely because of cars like the Fortuner, because that clearly makes for a more practical choice. And th definitely what you said, uh, there there is something there. Uh, if Toyota and Le Lexus could sort of capitalize on that, that could be uh, that could be a game changer for them. The Fortuner in itself was a game changer for Toyota, and it could very well turn out to be a game changer for Lexus as well if they could do something about it. Yeah, and let's let's not forget that the heart of every Lexus is there, Toyota at the end of the day. Uh, there are very few exactly. Lexus uh, cars uh, apart from the IS uh, portfolio that you know is purely Lexus. Most of them are all uh, Toyotas uh, that of course uh, rebadged, but of course a lot of upgradation also in terms of engine, fit and finish, right. quality materials, uh, you know, all of that. But uh, still, the Toyotas at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We have Anand here writing in saying that, sorry, I missed the price for this Fortuner. Could you please let me know? Anand, the Fortuner has not been launched in India yet. We're just showing you a first look of it. Rohit, you'd like to add something to that? Right. So this uh, car that you see here essentially was uh, unveiled in uh, Thailand yesterday. It will go on sale in Thailand very soon. Uh, and we expect it to come to India in the first quarter of 2021, like we mentioned uh, in this segment. So uh, it will certainly be priced here. It's got some tech, uh, technical upgrades to it. Uh, there's uh, some feature upgrades to it as well. Uh, so if all of that uh, is integrated, yes, it will definitely get priced here. In fact, uh, Toyotas have been getting priced here. Today, there was an announcement that uh, there has been a price increase across the Toyota range. Earlier this week, also, particularly for the Fortuner, uh, there was an announcement that uh, the car's gotten pricier. So, yes, uh, with all these features, it will become pricier than what it is right now. 
And as for the legend, oh. I won't be surprised if it touches the 50 lakh rupee mark on road in India uh, for the kind of equipment and the design that it offers right now. So uh, there you have it. I mean, I'm looking at at least a uh, lakh, lakh and a half rupees uh, on the base model uh, uh, in terms of the premium that he will pay for the new Fortuner. And for if the legend comes in, it will easily be between 45 to 50 lakh rupees is what I believe. But don't forget the price hike at this point in time, uh, Rohit, also because uh, these are CVUs that you're talking about, uh, both the Camry and the Wellfire. They're, they're completely built up units, so they imported uh, from Japan. And that effectively, because the exchange rate uh, has gone up, uh, so that's one of the reasons why they're uh, going to be paying a lot more for these two cars uh, in India henceforth. Uh, it may not apply to the Fortuner as much, but yeah, there will definitely be some price revisions when this uh, update uh, upgradation comes in, when this new facelift comes in. So let's let's wait and see what uh, those changes are like. Right. All right. So we'll just quickly head to our news section now. We'll first uh, tackle the four wheelers. Uh, let's start off with Kia. Now, when uh, Kia launched uh, the Celtos in India last year, there were so many variants and engine options, feature list to select. Uh, we were really spoiled for choice. Well, now Kia has made the Celtos an even more exciting proposition, adding some new features and bringing in some uh, uh, features from the top spec models to the lower variants. In total, you now get 16 variants and three engine options to choose from. It has discontinued its smart stream petrol 1.4T GDI GTK and the GTX 7 DCT variant. Uh, the highlight, of course, is it gets 10 new features with interior update and color options. And as you can see, there are also new safety and connectivity features which have been added. Does make so, so Swaini, for before, an before you move to the right? yes before you move to the next uh, news bit I think uh, let's quickly take one question uh, that uh, we got on YouTube uh, about the seven DCT being discontinued so they she just told you uh, it is just a, a few trims that have been reduced uh, from the Celtos the seven DCT is not going anywhere uh, there were rumors there were uh, some uh, misinterpreted news uh, out on the internet saying the 7 DCT is completely going out from the Kia range. Well, it's not happening. It's certain trims that had the 7 DCT uh, have been discontinued. Now, this is something that we also pointed out in the review that we did of the Celtos, the first review that we did of the Celtos, that yes, there are too many variants, too many trims to choose from, uh, which could end up becoming confusing for uh, the buyer, but that also opened the opportunity where Kia could offer everything that they had and then maybe later fine tune uh, what variants to offer depending on what the consumer is choosing and that's exactly what has happened now uh, with the Creta now coming in the competitions obviously become tougher and now Kia has uh, been in a position where they've sort of observed the market they've observed uh, the consumer trends and they have understood what is it that they're looking uh, for what are what are the consumers looking for in the Celtos and what is it that they're sort of avoiding or not really uh, looking at or it's just entered their blind spot so those kind of variants those kind of trims have been removed and uh, some uh, features or some trims that were missing or some features that were missing in some trims, all of that has been sort of rejigged, reshuffled and all of that. That's exactly what has happened. That is why you have a new variant now. You also have a new color where you have the orange color uh, that can be uh, optioned with a white roof. So all of that is essentially coming from the consumer trends and preferences that he has observed in the past few months after the Celtos went on sale. And that's exactly what is happening. So to answer your yep. question, no, the 7 DCT is not going anywhere. It is staying. It's still a part of Kia's lineup. It's still a big feather in their hat. And it's also coming to the Sonic. So it's not going anywhere. Also keep in mind, uh, my crucial over here is the fact that a lot of dealerships cannot manage the kind of inventory that 18 variants, you know, uh, bring uh, to the to the mix. Uh, that's a lot of inventory that they have to manage and uh, there have been issues with the BS4 to BS6 transitions which I'm uh, sure Kia also wants to play safe now. So do its dealers, uh, they won't you know, be on the safe side, not manage that kind of inventory. So all of this, uh, yeah, like you said, Robert, the consumer trends are now pointing out to what is selling in higher numbers, what is uh, where the demand uh, lies and what should be offered uh, in the future. So that's where this uh, you know, drop or other uh, consolidation in the number of variants that are being offered to consumers and kind of you know, fine tuning and honing what uh, the preferences should be like and what are the, what is the demand over. So in that sense, it becomes very crucial for Kia to you know not have those 18 variants, probably reduce them. Maybe in the future, they'll reduce even those even further, uh, depending on what uh, the demand goes like. But uh, yeah, expect to see something changing there. 
All right. Let's remind our uh, viewers. You can send us uh, some more of your queries. You can just use the comment section, and we'll answer them as and when we read them. Um, moving on, we have uh, interesting news from Mercedes Benz as well. Mercedes Benz has upgraded the engine lineup. We now have the petrol GLE 450, which is powered by a uh, inline 3 liter petrol paired with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. It puts out 367 PS and 500 Newton meters. And with the EQ Boost mild hybrid system, it adds a further 22 PS and 250 Newton meters. The diesel GLE 400D is now powered by a three liter inline six motor, which makes 330 PS and 700 Newton meters of torque. Both the variants come with a nine speed automatic gearbox. So alongside the GLEs, let's not forget uh, Mercedes-Benz also had uh, the introduction of the GTR and the C uh, C63 which we spoke about some time ago. So they're adding a lot more uh, meat to their range here in India. I just mentioned the number of models that they will be coming out with, uh, you know, the diversity of those products is going to be huge, and that's that that makes uh, it a very attractive uh, proposition for consumers because they've got something or other, you know, uh, in every segment that you would want at various price points as well. That's a fairly strong uh, approach that Mercedes Benz is taking in this market. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a question that I noticed. What about the 2021 Santa Fe and Hyundai Palisade? Any chance with them in India? Uh, Indrapreet Vadhwa has a question. Uh, in the treat, uh, well, the 2021 Santa Fe, well, that is definitely going to be coming to India. Hyundai will be offering that product in India. Uh, but uh, again, there's some time for that uh, to be launched over here. As for the Palisade, there's been a lot of excitement and a lot of announcement. And you heard some uh, media reports, some automotive journalists, uh, you know, going about town talking about the Palisade coming. And Hyundai is still doing a lot of uh, evaluations behind this. You keep in mind that the Santa Fe itself does not sell in large numbers. And then we get another product that is uh, even fewer numbers in the Santa Fe. Uh, does it really make sense for them to invest in the product and offer it to consumers in India? So, chances are that the Palisade will not come here at all. Uh, but let's see, fingers crossed if it does. It's an interesting SUV, not the best of SUVs to be driving around, but uh, there are better choices uh, at that size in the market. Okay, I think we have I'm going to add a little bit to uh, what uh, Bert just said about uh, the, the, the two uh, top end Hyundai's now. Uh, so I think somewhere in that particular price bracket, Hyundai is still not uh, perceived as a very strong brand value. Uh, and that is something that uh, Hyundai has experienced in the past in India particularly, uh, which is why I think Hyundai India is also looking at alternatives in, in way of the alternative fuels uh, in that particular price or the higher end of the, uh, of the bracket. Uh, so you have the Hyundai Nexo, which is being tested. Uh, there are alternative uh, propulsion plans that they're looking at and all of that. So yes, they are looking at a multitude of options, uh, not just the traditional names like the Santa Fe and the new Palisade, but also uh, different uh, propulsion uh, technologies like fuel cell and all of that. So there is a lot that is being uh, evaluated at Hyundai uh, is what we hear. Uh, so, yeah, we'll definitely see some uh, action in that price bracket as well, something upwards of 35, 40 lakh rupees. All right. We have yet another question from Indrapreet. He asked that why uh, hasn't uh, the new Seltos come with a panoramic sunroof? Well, I think I'll take that question. Uh, we very recently have done a comparison between the new Hyundai Creta and the Seltos. So definitely wait for the magazine to come out. Uh, the magazine should be out very soon uh, for you to download from the O-Drive uh, website as well. And you will be able to read that story. Uh, and that story sort of uh, showcases how Hyundai, uh, the Hyundai Motor Corporation has gone about planning these two vehicles, the, uh, the, uh, the, CR, the Kia Seltos and the Hyundai Creta, how they've gone about planning these two vehicles. They're based on the same platform. There is very, very uh, uh, big features list that both of these uh, vehicles boast of. And because it's a, it's a shared platform, they're very similar to each other. And that is where Hyundai has had to sort of uh, very carefully plan which vehicle gets what, what are the trump cards for either one of them, and then put it out into the market. So the panoramic sunroof, I think, is still going to be a trump card or an exclusive feature for the Creta. Uh, whereas there are some other features like the 360 degree camera, the blind spot assist and all of that, which will remain exclusive uh, to the Kia Seltos. So there are a few uh, few blows that they'll exchange with each other in terms of these kind of features where something is exclusive to a particular brand. And I think that is uh, that is a very uh, logical move from uh, uh, from the brand, because, like I said, they're so similar. They had to have these differentiating factors somewhere. 
All right, Ganesh would like to know that uh, is there any update on uh, the Tata Gravitas? Well, nothing as of now, Ganesh. Uh, we will have some information for you on that. But keep in mind, everybody has been set back uh, because of the lockdown and the way the virus has uh, disrupted businesses. So we will have information for you on that. But uh, expect anything to happen in that direction in the next uh, few months, which means could mean anywhere between three to the next uh, four or five months. All right. And Sri Krishna would like to know um, about the. Tata yeah, Ultros X. Question. Yeah, X. The Rx L. Well, uh, tough question because you're looking at two different kinds of uh, products here entirely. The Altros, of course, again, at the end of the day, is, uh, is, is a car and the driver is more MPV ish. So the driver, of course, gives you a little more value in terms of uh, better size, uh, better packaging, interior packaging. Uh, it's also about good ride quality. Uh, it's it's not an uh, it's not a uh, apples to apples comparison, but uh, nonetheless, uh, if you had to look at value for money at this point in time, Renault's cars uh, have shown us in the past also that uh, they really stand the test of time. They built well, they built strongly, and uh, the reliability is way of very very high order. Not to say that Tata Motors isn't improved in this regard; they have also gotten better. But I think Renault Triber would definitely provide you a little bit more value for money in uh, the long run. All right, and Suraj Shetty would like to know that uh, how does the Skoda Superb uh, fare against the big German? Well, the new Superb is something that we need to drive. That's the basic thing. Superb. Uh, we haven't driven this, but uh, globally, uh, from what I understand, uh, from what I have seen as well uh, and read about, uh, the Superb is equated uh, to various the cars uh, from the German brands, like for instance the E Class uh, or the A6 also for that matter. So in that regard, uh, the Superb is one of is a competitor against these products. Of course, in India, the dynamics change because uh, Skoda offers the Superb at a much lower price point compared to the E Class or the A6 or the, the, the five series. Uh, and that's that's how the, the that's that's essentially so where do you think uh, that's that's where the superb sits uh, and in comparison it's got the same level of kit as good right quality if not uh, you know uh, comparable then probably better than some of those cars also for that matter uh, and dynamics also it's it's a pretty impressive car at the end of the day all right so we'll just take a break from these questions because we have a couple of more uh, stories lined up uh, so we'll get back to our news section talking about the germans uh, we have the Volkswagen p rock has been quite a surprise package so out of the thousand units that the company had brought into india this year they have already managed to sell almost 800 units and 20 percent are still up for grabs the t rock can be uh, still booked uh, for a booking amount of 50,000 rupees at volkswagen dealerships or via the volkswagen website We also have some interesting news coming in from MG Motors, uh, the ZS EV, which was already available in Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Bengaluru, and Hyderabad, will now be available in Chennai, Pune, Surat, Chandigarh, Cochin, and Jaipur. Also, uh, the customers in these cities will have access to fast chargers in MG dealerships. <laughs> Is that a glitch or something? Is that a glitch or something? Sorry, one sec. Hold on, one sec. Ah, you all can actually carry on. You all can carry on. Yes, I think uh, since we're on the topic of MG, I'll, I'm going to quickly take uh, a question that Mr. Manish uh, Bharadwaj uh, posted for us. Uh, what about the Hector Plus? Uh, so yes, the Hector Plus uh, is definitely coming. In fact, we had a word with MG earlier this week uh, when the news about the uh, ZS EV uh, now expanding its network came out. And uh, the Hector Plus, uh, it's uh, well a little bit delayed. Uh, the the schedules have gone for a toss uh, given the current scenario, but the Hector Plus will come out. In fact, that is going to be the next uh, uh, next launch from MG uh, for this year. Uh, but the next big launch for MG this year is going to be the Gloucester, which will uh, come out in the fourth quarter of this calendar year. Uh, so both these vehicles are confirmed for a 2020 launch, uh, despite everything that's happening around. And uh, the Hector Plus is one of the first ones to come out. So I'm expecting it to come out about uh, between July or August. That is when they'll open bookings and make the price announcement and all of that. Uh, we saw the vehicle uh, at the Auto Expo. The cabin wasn't shown to us. Uh, there are a few changes to the cabin. There are a few changes to the design as well. Uh, if you can quickly search uh, on the Overdrive YouTube channel for the Hector Plus, you will get a walk around video of 
how the cars we've uh, shown you the car in detail as much as we could from the auto expo uh, so all of that is happening you will get a lot of information about that uh, there is the new a uh, two liter diesel engine uh, from the uh, Jeep Compass, uh, the new BS6 engine, the two liter multi jet two that will also come to the Hector. Uh, so that's something to look forward to as well. So yes, the Hector Plus is coming and it will be here in the next couple of months is what I believe. There is also a question which is coming from Ashish Deshpande. He wants to know, is it worth waiting for the new i20 or will the Ultras make a good deal? Well, I, I do think, I do believe the uh, the wait for the I-20 is going to be good because uh, let's not forget that's that's just around the corner. There's a few months uh, for that car to be introduced in the Indian market. Uh, I suspect uh, the launch will happen sometime in September or October of this year. Uh, that's when it's expected to come down. So I would just uh, suggest, Ashish, that you wait for a little while. Uh, it's not too long. It's not too far away. And let's see how the I-20 shapes up uh, to be. So once that is done, let's, let's figure out how it rides, drives, and we'll have a review for you on that car. And of course, the comparisons also will happen. So uh, let's just wait. Let's be a little more patient for that product to come out. Ganesh would also uh, like to know whether Maruti will launch diesel models of BS6. No. Uh, at this moment, uh, well, Maruti does not have any plans to come back into the diesel market. Uh, even if they do, it's uh, it's going to take them some time to return back to this, if at all they do for that matter. But uh, right now, Maruti is uh, very, very strongly suggested that uh, they are going to follow a petrol agenda. Also keep in mind that it's not uh, the easiest of things to get a diesel engine uh, for small cars uh, ready because it's really ups the cost. Uh, complexities are large uh, and uh, most of these small diesels are it's very difficult to make them conform to the BS6 emission norms uh, so the safer uh, and the more uh, smarter route for manufacturers especially like Maruti who've got a lot of small cars in their range uh, is to go petrol only uh, that's that's where the, the futures for Maruti uh, definitely lie yeah, Abhinav Chaudhary has a uh, very valid Sorry. Before you uh, go to the next one, uh, in fact, I'm going to add to that. Uh, so uh, the 1.5 liter diesel that debuted from Maruti uh, uh, just before uh, the BS6 kicked in. Uh, so we hear that that engine can be tuned for BS6 compliance, uh, but Maruti just doesn't see any economic sense in doing that right now because uh, to make it BS6 compliant, like Bert said, the kind of cost that it will uh, come at uh, to the consumer, it will just offset the whole uh, idea of buying a diesel vehicle and to that effect Maruti this week also started uh, a new calculator on the website uh, where you can simply enter the number of kilometers that you are expected to drive your car every day uh, in normal situations of course normal conditions and if that were to happen uh, what are what, what is the kind of uh, mileage that you will have to put on your diesel vehicle to be able to recover that extra cost that you're going to invest buying a diesel over its petrol counterpart. So that's a very interesting calculator. Uh, so maybe you should definitely uh, take a look at that. And if you still need a diesel, well, no, Maruti doesn't have a BS6 diesel coming anytime soon. You will have to look elsewhere. All right. And Abhinav has a very interesting question. He writes in saying, how do you choose between the Seltos and the Hyundai Creta? And what about the City 2020? Well, uh, I, I just uh, like Rohit just mentioned, uh, do wait. Uh, it's just a few days uh, till we and we'll till we reveal the story between the Creta and the Seltos and how each of these fares and which is the better product to go in for. I'm not going to spoil that surprise uh, for any of you all out there. It's just a matter of a few more days, probably another two or three for that matter, uh, and you'll have the answers to that question about the Honda City 2020 launch. That is that is just right around the corner. I think another few weeks, uh, if not you know about a month at the most, uh, and uh, Honda should be ready with the with the announcements. Uh, again, all of this has got uh, delayed or pushed back simply because of the pandemic. So uh, we're just waiting for a few more uh, announcements from Honda. They should be coming out with this very, very soon. Satish, George uh, is expecting some good news. He's asking whether there's any good news on the XUV300 DI petrol. Well, Sadish, uh, I, I genuinely don't have any news for you on that at this point in time. I'm not sure Rohit has either for that matter. But I have uh, some. Yes, I have some. In fact, that vehicle was shown at the Auto Expo. It was right, scheduled right. for an April launch. Uh, but again, given the current scenario, everyone's sort of uh, been on the back foot. So hopefully once everything settles, uh, we should have that vehicle. I think uh, now they would delay it around uh, the, uh, the festive season. So hopefully by July, August, you should hear something about it. The vehicle's ready. It's all tested and ready. Uh, it's just about uh, time that they uh, announce the pricing and put it out into the market when the conditions are favorable. So yes, it's just around the corner. 
All right. So, uh, Rohit, I'll let you uh, go on with our news section. There is plenty of two-wheeler news that uh, we have. Right. Well, let's start so, with I think that. Uh, one of the first uh, news uh, that we should quickly get out of the way is the Honda CD110 Dream, which has now been launched uh, in its uh, VSX Avatar as well with uh, a price tag of 62729 So, mm -hmm. if uh, you've been uh, waiting for the VSX version of this motorcycle to come out, well, it is out now into the market. Uh, the next news is a big one uh, for cruiser enthusiasts out there. Uh, okay, before we go, uh, let's quickly talk about the Vespa. Uh, so that was the Vespa uh, Note 125 uh, that you saw on the screen right now. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the base spec Vespa 125 that you can buy right now. And uh, why it's in the news is because this is the BS6 variant that has come out. Uh, no drop on the power or torque figures. It still puts out the same uh, power, uh, but it is 17,000 rupees more expensive than its BS4 counterpart. Uh, so that is uh, what the bike is about, uh, the scooter is about rather. It's priced at 91,462 and that's quite a significant premium to pay over its Japanese rivals. But if you still want a Vespa and you want an entry level model, this is the one that you would want to go for. Now the next one is, uh, like I said, uh, a very big news for cruiser fans out there uh, and BMW Motorrad fans out there as well. If you have been waiting for a BMW Cruiser, well, uh, the brand made a, made a re-entry into the cruiser segment with the R18 and that bike is coming to India this year. In fact, if you are interested uh, in that motorcycle, the BMW Motorrad India website is already uh, registering uh, any prospective customers uh, for, this, uh, for this motorcycle. And like I said, by the end of this year, fourth quarter of calendar year 2020 is when we will see this motorcycle coming in. Uh, now, lately, we have seen BMW manage some really good pricing for uh, their motorcycles. Uh, we saw that with the F900 range, where it's priced really, really well for what the badge is notorious for. Uh, and uh, going by that, we believe that this bike would start at about 20 lakh rupees in the Indian market and go all the way up to 24 lakh rupees for the top end model. For those of you who don't know, this uses a boxer engine, the biggest one of its kind at 1800 cc's. Puts out 91 PS of power, so it should be quick as well. Uh, we have a detailed uh, first look of this motorcycle uh, up on the Overdrive website, so do check it out. We have gone into the detail of uh, the technicalities, the design, and all of that. It will go up against the likes of the Harley Davidson Fat Boy. So, like I said, if you've been waiting for a BMW Cruiser, well, it's coming to India very soon. It's already out in the American and European market. It's received quite well as well. Uh, BMW says that uh, the response has been overwhelming. It's better than what they thought uh, they would receive in Europe particularly, but people have taken to this motorcycle quite well. And uh, I don't know if the same will happen in India, but like I said, if you're one of those, go to the website right now and register your interest. And the next uh, big news is for super sport fans, uh, especially the middleweight super sport fans, including myself. Uh, the Aprilia RS660 is going to enter production very soon, after which it will be launched in Italy. And immediately after that, the units will come to India for homologation and they will be launched in India as well. Now, this is not a speculation. This is coming straight from Piaggio. We had a chat with Piaggio India earlier this week uh, where they spoke to us about different models from Moto Guzzi, Aprilia and Vespa. Uh, the Vespa Note 125 is already here and they had some juicy details to share about the other vehicles that are coming from the Aprilia brand as well. In fact, uh, why don't we quickly just cut to uh, the interview directly so you can uh, hear it from Piaggio, what is coming up. So we are talking to Mr. Graffi uh, from Piaggio Motors. We spoke to him a little while back at the Auto Expo and now he is in his office. We are in our work from home space and we are chatting right after the uh, Auto Expo. Quite some time has gone between the Auto Expo. Mr. Graffi, welcome to Overdrive. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us today. Uh, now, the last time we spoke to Piaggio was at the Auto Expo. Uh, it was around the SXR 160 that was shown at the Auto Expo. We love the scooter. It's a new segment for us, a maxi scooter segment. That's something that uh, wowed the audience as well. And uh, when we spoke to your team uh, back at the Expo, uh, we were told that uh, October is the tentative time that you were looking for, for launching the SXR 160 and also the smaller SXR 125. So are you still on schedule for that or has the current scheme of things uh, sort of uh, set back those timelines? Okay, so first of all, thanks for the invitation. Happy that we had the chance to meet, uh, to meet again after, after some months. 
after Auto Expo. Well, I think uh, uh, definitely we are trying to stick at the original plan in terms of October as SOP. Uh, definitely there are difficulties because uh, down the line, uh, due to lockdown, uh, we have been uh, losing uh, nearly more than two months actually. And so we are trying now to understand how to recover these two months. We are trying to do our best to stick at the original plan. So we know that the time constriction is very, is very, is very tough. So at the moment, I cannot confirm that we go for October, but I can assure that we try to do our best, at least before Diwali, to have it available in the market. Okay. The 250cc to 300cc segment of platform that you're looking at now, uh, are you going to explore uh, with that platform only under the Aprilia brand, or are you also uh, going to uh, look at uh, using the Moto Guzzi badge on that platform? Uh, and if yes, then what are different uh, body styles are you currently uh, toying with the idea? Are you only looking at uh, the likes of uh, a street bike and a, and a super sport under the Aprilia brand, or uh, are you looking at any more body styles? And if you are going to extend it to other brands like Moto Guzzi, then would you again consider maybe different body styles like a cruiser or a, or a Moto Guzzi style uh, old school speed bike or maybe even an enduro off roader? Well, uh, you know, when you have a platform, uh, basically you have uh, a nice opportunity in the sense that uh, you can uh, you can uh, try to. Uh, we have a lot of examples with uh, to which uh, with one platform you can go for different kind of style, different kind of concept of vehicle, different kind of segment. And we have experience in the agile for these kind of uh, how to say exercises. Um, at the moment, the plan that we have uh, is to concentrate and focus on the product that are more current with the heritage and the DNA that is Aprilia that are uh, product like. Uh, RCD or uh, tourno in the sense that naked or also a sport, a sport, a sport bike. So at the moment, the product that we have in mind are product in that segment range. But definitely, uh, depending on the success uh, that we will see while uh, after introducing this bike in the market, definitely the opportunity are immense also to explore new brands. That's how, as I said, uh, uh, I think that Aprilia is a brand that has a potential for growth that is immense here in India. We have seen that uh, in just a few months after introduction of uh, the, the scooter, the, the SAR, in 2016, the knowledge and awareness of the brand, brand growth has grown exponentially here in India. So that means that there is a fertile ground for that brand that we have not yet explored and we want to explore also with the motorbike segment. Right. I think that's something to look forward to for all of us then. Uh, we have the SXRs coming, uh, like you said, hopefully by Diwali. And then the RS660 is something that I personally am waiting to ride as soon as possible. So let's hope that uh, all of that happens very soon. We wish you all the very best for uh, your plans and for everything uh, ahead. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us, Mr. Graffi. Uh, that's all from our end. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, we're back. Yes, I think uh, Soini's mic is still muted. Uh, Soini. Oops. Okay, sorry. Very sorry about that. This production this and anchoring bit, it's new. <laughs> These are new world problems. Oh let's let's call these new world digital, problems. Digital world problems. <laughs> so I, I was just telling our viewers, if you have any queries about uh, Piaggio, about Aprilia scooters, please feel free to ask us uh, the question. Sri Krishna here has a question. He wants to know, is there uh, any upcoming long range electric uh, bike or scooter from any reputed brand uh, here more than 150 kilometer range? Well, nothing that goes it's up. Like Birds already said, uh, nothing in the near future. But uh, I don't know if you watched uh, last week's uh, episode, uh, Shri Krishna. Uh, we, uh, when we did the news roundup, we talked about uh, the Ola Electric, uh, the big news about Ola Electric taking over uh, Etergo from Netherlands. Now, Etergo has a scooter called the App Scooter. And that promises uh, the kind of range that uh, you are asking about. Uh, now, Ola said that they will bring an electric scooter to the Indian market in 2021. They haven't necessarily mentioned 
uh, that it will be the app scooter. It could be a derivative of that. It could be technologies borrowed from the app scooter for an indigenous version. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, it could be the app scooter. If, if it is the app scooter, then yes, that 150 uh, range, or in fact, even more than that, 240 is what they're claiming. Uh, that could still be a possibility. Uh, so yes, there is something to look forward to, but not in the near future. It's still some time away. Uh, so yeah, nothing, nothing that we know of that is coming out immediately. In fact, uh, we okay. even asked uh, Piaget or if the Vespa Electrica uh, will come to India anytime soon. So they are looking into that. But that, again, is in the same bracket as something like the 450X or the Bajaj Chetak EV. So you're still looking at a realistic 100, 110 kilometers of uh, ride, uh, drive, riding range. So nothing in that 150 uh, range, really. But Ashin Teshpande wants to know what car do you own? What car do I own? I own uh, a 920 Active uh, which is largely used for urban commuting, uh, which I haven't used uh, for, for a long time also, because uh, I have been using uh, Ola and Uber. <laughs> but I know you've been using more than Ola and Uber. I have seen you. Oh, uh... It's a local train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm sure when, when Bert is dreaming, it's always the, the G-Wagon. I know that. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely. High on my priority list. Uh, well, there are three cars on my priority list uh, in the near future, hopefully. Uh, there's It starts off with the Suzu D-Max, then it moves on to the Jeep Wrangler, and then goes on at the top end uh, with uh, the G-Wagon, uh, either the G-Wagon or uh, the G63 AMG, one of the two. I'm not sure which. But uh, priority list, that's the order of things in the future. Dreams versus reality, right? But he also wants to know, will the new Thar uh, still be a lifestyle vehicle or can it be an everyday car? Uh, well, I do believe that the new Thar will be an everyday car. That's what uh, Mahindra is going to be aiming for. I mean, keep in mind that uh, no manufacturer makes a car in India as a lifestyle choice and for a small niche set of buyers. Uh, everybody wants their cars to reach out to as many consumers as they can. Keep in mind, this is a large market, 130 crore people, and we'd like as many of them to drive and ride, uh, you know, cars and bikes for that matter. Manufacturers, these not uh, just us, but uh, so uh, the Thar will definitely be uh, more than just a lifestyle vehicle. It will be something that you can use uh, every day as well. And yeah, if if it looks good, rides well, uh, has got the kind of refinement that you want, uh, I don't see why uh, you shouldn't be driving something of that sort every day. I would drive. drive. Every day. We have a question from Suraj Chetty also. He wants to know that uh, Karok versus T Rock is Karok substantially better than the T Rock to command uh, the 5 lakh premium? Well, I just put up a link uh, to uh, that story, and uh, you know, uh, you can definitely go out there and read what are those differences and what do you get uh, for uh, in each of these cars. Because keep in mind, they're both on the MPV platform, the same platform. So it's essentially one uh, one platform with two top hats for that matter, or rather, I would say two different uh, you know products at the end of the day with uh, Skoda's ideology and Volkswagen's ideology uh, coming forth. Uh, but both have approached uh, this product in a slightly different manner. I think that story will effectively tell you what's what's good and what's not, and what's to be had in each of these cars, and you will get a sense of why uh, the Karok is five lakh rupees more than the T-Rock. Yeah. Saurabh uh, has a technical question. He wants to know whether there will be a transmission heating uh, issue in the 1.4 DCT Creta. Uh, not to my knowledge, uh, Saurabh, there shouldn't be a transmission heating issue in the 1.4 DCT Creta. Uh, if you do sense or uh, if you're getting any heating issues or if uh, there are some issues with the transmission not operating properly, then that, that's, a, that's a slightly more serious problem needs to be looked into. Uh, if it's just ambient heat that you feel around uh, the gear lever, uh, and somewhere there, it could be uh, an issue with uh, the underbody cladding also because there are heat uh, protection uh, materials kept over there just so that the heat from the exhaust doesn't come into the cabin and doesn't uh, permeate. So there could be something with like that. But yeah, it's, it makes sense to just go out to a workshop and have that checked once. There shouldn't be any excess of heating. Otherwise, in uh, the DCT, the dual clutch transmissions don't have any overheating issues, at least the modern generation. All right. Kartik wants to know when the BS6 uh, S Cross will be uh, coming to India, will launch in India. Well, I think all these launches are, uh, well, they were all uh, in, in line, you know, over this period of time. But of course, uh, with these three months uh, gone, uh, I think everything is going to be delayed and everything is going to be, the, most manufacturers are going back to the drawing board in terms of uh, when and how they're going to launch and introduce their products. When does it make sense to bring this kind of products to the market? 
so a lot of these uh, decisions have been deferred for a while. Uh, I think just pay attention to what's happening on Overdrive.in uh, or the news that we're providing you with you with on the, on our social media channels or on television as well. And we will have uh, updates for you coming up over there. Uh, let's not take anything for granted at this point in time. Uh, manufacturers will be launching a lot of their cars that they had showcased at Auto Expo. But there's going to be some delays uh, in in that front. But yeah, the BS6 uh, BS6 S Cross will be coming out. That's for sure. That's that's what I can say. In fact, it will come out uh, by the end of June, is what uh, Mr. Shivastava hinted when we did the interview with Maruti yeah. Suzuki a couple of weeks uh, back. Uh, and end of June is what they're hinting at. They're looking at that. It's not a confirmed news. Uh, like Bert said, uh, things have been sort of set back right now because of the current situation. So there have been delays. But end of June is what they're sort of hinting at and uh, working towards. So, yeah, if you're waiting to get uh, the S Cross 1.5, it's going to be a petrol uh, only now. Uh, the same uh, engine as the CIS uh, with the mild heavy tech and all of that. Uh, so, the 1.5 will come out hopefully by the end of June. There's one more question about Maruti. Satish wants to know is there uh, any sub, uh, yes, whether yes, the yes. Jimny, Fordo, and the Vitara are expected? Anytime. Well, uh, the Vitara, the Grand Vitara was definitely expected to come down to India. Uh, but that again, all of these uh, are going to be deferred for that matter, like we just mentioned. Uh, uh, but the Jimny four-door, uh, well, there isn't a plan for the Jimny. As, as of this moment, there isn't a plan for Martin to get the Jimny into India. There's been a lot of speculation, a lot of announcement and, you know, uh, brow meeting from the top of the rooftops, from the rooftops. Everyone talking and speaking about the chimney coming out of India. But, uh, well, Maruti really doesn't see much uh, benefit from getting that product to India because they need volumes for that kind of segment. And essentially, they don't really have those kind of volumes uh, as of yet. Now, if it happens, it may take some, uh, it may definitely take some more time for that product to come into the, into the market. Uh, again, there are, there are definitely a lot of consumers, a lot of enthusiasts who, well, want something like the gypsy back again in the market. But is the chimney going to really make it? Uh, I'm not very confident if it will. Rohit smiling. Does he have something else to offer? No. In fact, I'm also waiting for the Jimny to come. I even uh, ran a little hashtag on uh, our own Instagram and Overdrive's Instagram saying vote for Jimny. So I, I really hope it comes. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it has to make business sense for the car maker to bring the car down to India. They, they have the uh, right uh, platform. They have the right uh, engines for it as well. The 1.5 uh, that we just talked about with the S-Cross. Uh, fits it to the Jimny as well. They have that version uh, running in Germany, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so yes, they have the car. It just needs to make uh, the right sense uh, for the economic sense for Maruti Suzuki to bring it down to India. Yeah, because keep in mind also the Jimny is a very unique platform. It's a single platform. There isn't any other car that shares that platform or can be built off it. So Maruti will have to take a fairly big decision to introduce something that is that niche in the market and you know generate the kind of volumes because they don't want to end up. Uh, with a product that is there and that sits like the gypsy and will probably sell for several years, no doubt about it, sell for a decade, plus, more than a decade also for that matter. But uh, a product that they can't take anywhere. Uh, same like in the gypsy, the only upgrades that they could do were to the engine or other, you know, uh, reform it to, you know, comply with whatever uh, emission norms are there at the time. But uh, more than that, there really wasn't much that they could do. So Maruti doesn't want to get in, uh, get into that uh, situation uh, and, and see that product you know, go to waste uh, over a period of time otherwise. Okay, let's uh, end uh, this session with one last uh, question. Harsha Gowda, I think, is ready for a Tesla. So he wants to know, <laughs> is it coming to India? Well, Elon wants to know. He is Harsha right now, so I don't think uh, anything on the ground is really going to matter. <laughs> I've said that, no, uh, Tesla is not coming to India. Uh, nothing right now, no plans for that product over here. Uh, keep in mind, Elon Musk has very clearly indicated that uh, until and unless the infrastructure is in place, it does not make sense for a manufacturer for a product like anything that Tesla has to offer to be uh, to be offered in India. So there you have it. Let the infrastructure come in, and I think that's a smart move. Let the infrastructure come in, and I think uh, a lot of in, uh, EV players will uh, find this market very very lucrative. All right, I think uh, that's all that we have on this week's show. We've uh, run beyond our one hour uh, time slot that we had planned for ourselves. Thank you yes, so much. We still for are watching. getting questions, I think, Soini. Uh, let me just quickly answer the last two that have come. We'll not take any more. Uh, between the Creta 1.5 and the 1.4, yes, you have made a very good choice booking the 1.4. That is what I would buy as well if I was buying. And uh, is the Polo 1.0 TSI worth buying? 
Well, like Bert said, two, three more days, the new overdrive issue will be out and we have a story for you with the Polo 1.0 uh, TSI. So definitely check that out and hopefully it should answer your question. If it doesn't, you can always come back next Friday and ask us uh, more specific questions about these cars or any other cars and bikes and we would love to answer all of them. There's one more. There's one last one, EcoSport, the EcoSport Avenue. We already have a very detailed comparison of uh, that on the O-Drive YouTube channel. Uh, it was a very unique comparison as well. So definitely do take a look. It will answer your question. Uh, both the cars are excellent choices. You can literally follow your heart and buy whichever you like out of the two. But if you want more specific answers, uh, that's the that's the comparo you want to check out. It's on the O-Drive YouTube channel. All right. That's all we had on this uh, week's show. We do hope to get back uh, to our usual schedules and get uh, first drives as soon as possible. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us, Rohit and Bert. And uh, we'll catch up next week as well. Until then, stay safe and stay home. All right. See you guys. See you.